um, from Nevada. Um, 23 years I was on Xanax and Paxil. My old doctor retired and now I am seeing a psychiatrist. I have PTSD, CHF, and uncontrolled panic attacks. So CHF is chronic um, congestive heart failure. Um, okay, I'm 65 years old and I don't have that many good years left. I'm on Clonopin right now, but my doctor wants me off of that. She took me off SSRI. Rise. Okay, the Clonopin has not been good for me at all. Very dark urine and diarrhea. My cardiologist has no problem with me going back on Xanax. Okay, here's another thing. This brings up something really good and I'm, and I'm glad that you brought this question to all of our attention because the thing with benzos, um, especially at this age, like the reason you wanna come off of them is because they're causing a problem, right? You reach that rebound reactive symptom, you know, you've been on them for so long, they stop working. So you wanna taper off, right? But some patients do fine with the benzos for many years and it kind of helps them function, especially as you're getting to this older age and you have these uncontrolled panic attacks, et cetera, et cetera. Maybe you've tried coming off of benzos before and it didn't work and the doctor decided it was best for you to, to be on something. Now, the reason they probably switched you to clonazepam in the first place was because it's a longer half-life and with Xanax or Alprazolam, very short acting and oftentimes you end up with inner dosing withdrawals and so in between like you know say you take the xanax in the morning and then by the time you're, you're ready for the next dose um you know within four hours or so you're going to have the increased anxiety coming back and this resurfacing of panic attacks so to help avoid that they, they may have switched you to clonazepam because they thought you may have been having that reaction to xanax however patient preference is key um, and, and listening to your patients is also key. And I've had people, you know, and patients, you know, say to me, like, look, I understand these risks. I understand that it can cause this um, rebound, you know, issue. It can cause this tolerance. It can cause this withdrawal. But I feel like I'm tolerating it, tolerating it fine, and I'm fine with where I'm at, and I don't want to change. So you make sure that they have the informed consent and they understand the risk. And if they're willing to continue the medication despite the risk, that's the patient choice. However, the provider also, you know, has to be okay with it, you know, in that regard. So finding a provider who's going to be supportive of your decisions, because as a provider, as a me, as a psychiatric nurse practitioner, my role is to do less, no harm, do, you know, to, to not want to get you down that path of, you know, being dependent on a Xanax now, having interdosing withdrawals and now trying to figure out how to get you off of it later on, especially at your age, um, because it's a lot harder and it's going to be harder on your system. So lots of things to consider here. You have to weigh the risk versus benefit. If your cardiologist is saying, hey, probably be OK to go back on Xanax, then that's perhaps something that you should talk to your psychiatrist about and say, look, I'm having these effects with clonazepam, um, the dark urine, the diarrhea, the dark urine could be issues with kidney or, um, or even liver and the diarrhea, you know, um, so make sure you're getting labs done and making, you know, seeing how it's affecting you. If that's the case, even Xanax may not be good for you. If you have elevated liver enzymes, you may want to consider lorazepam instead. But, um, you, you know, if the issue was the interdosing withdrawals and that's why you got put on um, clonopin to begin with um, and if your liver enzymes are okay maybe switching to something a little longer like Valium may even be better but this is something you're gonna have to weigh out with your psychiatrist and talk to them about this risk versus benefit and talk to them about you know that you understand the risk you can pull up let me let me do that for you because another thing that you'd want to do to help protect to help the psychiatrist feel a little more comfortable this is what i do i have my patient sign a, an informed consent that is very detailed and i make sure i read it to them and each each thing they understand and they sign initial each thing um let me see 
that you can um, you know, send to your provider, that you can print out, that you can read and make sure that you understand every single one of those risks and then say to your doctor, you know, hey, these are the risks that I'm aware of. Um, you know, I'm happy to, you know, I'm, you know, I've gone over this, I've signed it. Um, I want to make this part of my file um, because, you know, I think that going back to Xanax may be the right choice for me. And then it'll be up to your psychiatrist to decide whether or not they want to, um, you know, go on, go forward with that. And like I said, because, you know, the, the psychiatrist is probably looking at the angle of do no harm. Um, and especially, you know, as you get into long-term use of benzos, there's a, there is an increased risk of harm, but that's just something you're going to have to discuss with them. But sometimes, you know, it is, um, beneficial for some people to continue on with their benzodiazepine. Uh, and then Betty Omen, what do you think about pregnancy with the new medication Alvelity? You know what, when it comes to pregnancy, um, Alvelity is the bupropion with the, um, what is it, the um, the NMDA antagonist, the, the, the cough syrup stuff, the DM, right? Dex Dextromethorphan. Um, but really, I'm, I'm concerned about the bupropion. Um, seizure risk is high, seizure threshold um, goes low, and when you're pregnant, um, you, you know, you have an increased risk of these types of things because of your nutrient um, risk. And so that, that's why you have to be careful with that. And so um, definitely um, go ahead and as far as um, with pregnancy, therapy, um, I would say, you know, because we can't really say any medication is safe in therapy, um, excuse me, safe in pregnancy. And so therefore, you know, no medication is best. However, there are research studies that um, will say SSRIs, like things like sertraline or Lexapro are relatively safe, right? But what's relative? So you, you got to be careful there. You know, definitely discuss it with your OBGYN, discuss it with your primary um, provider, your, your psychiatrist, make sure everyone's on board. Therapy first, of course, no medication is safest. If you have to choose a medication, SSRIs like acetalopram, sertraline have, have shown a lot of safety data or have a lot of safety data um, with pregnancy, but does not mean that it is 100% um, safe. There's still gonna be a risk, so you really have to weigh that out, risk versus benefit, okay? That's important.